Hello to all you lovely brides and grooms out there. I'm Nikita. And I'm Amelia. And welcome to Guys to Brides, the wedding podcast. This brand new podcast will help guide you through your wedding family, discuss trends and so much more. Let's get started. Hello Amelia. Happy New Year. And a Happy New Year to you too. I can't believe Christmas is over and we're in 2021 already. Yes, thankfully 2020 is behind us now. Yep, I can't really tell if last year dragged or if it flew by because it did feel like it lasted forever in those stages, especially in the lockdowns. But we've also been so busy at Guys for Bright HQ that it's gone somewhat quickly. I know, it's a little bit of a blur of a year, but I think we can all agree, good riddance. Absolutely. (laughs) It's time to start fresh and you may even say the perfect time to start a podcast. You could say that, can't you? (laughs) So this brand new podcast will be guiding you through the many stages and elements of planning a wedding and we couldn't think of a better way to start our series than by discussing those first initial days and weeks of your planning process. We are trying to keep this a COVID free zone and of course if there is a point that's relevant to planning a wedding during a pandemic we will be sure to mention it but we do want this podcast to be a place that you can come to for planning at almost any point during the process, COVID or no COVID especially when we're hopeful that things are looking positive for the next few months and into the summer with the vaccine in place and rapid testing and all that. Exactly. So if you are looking for COVID updates, our blogs are kept up to date as much as possible with the latest news. And we even have a COVID-19 blog category on our website. So make sure to check that out. Um, You can also head over to our Facebook page. Um, We often do live videos on there and share the latest news and current measures in place. Yeah, we try and keep everyone as updated as possible on the situation. Um, You may have already seen Guide to Brides' top dog, Alison, as she regularly does live videos on there. So make sure to follow us if you haven't already. We do like to work as a community of wedding businesses and couples. So you'll see, especially on our live videos, that there's loads of couples and suppliers who are commenting on our posts and just being generally helpful and supportive to each other. It's really lovely. Yeah. So after that small segue, it's likely a lot of you have said yes over the festive period and congratulations if that's you. But understandably, if you've never planned a wedding before, you're probably asking yourself, I'm engaged, now what? So Amelia, how did your now husband propose to you and what were those first few days of being engaged like? So my now hobby uh, proposed to me, we were um, staying over at my parents' house for the weekend. Um, and nearby is this nice little reservoir where we used to go for walks and things. Um, it was a nice Sunday morning. We went down there for a walk and we got back to the car and he was putting his um, muddy boots in the, in the boot of his car. And I was like, why is your um, ukulele in the car? So I <laughs> bought him this ukulele for his birthday that year. And unbeknown to me, he'd been secretly (laughs) practicing. Um, And he said, oh, I wanted to play you a little song. So so he sat in his boot and I realized he put those little wire fairy lights all the way around um, the outline of the boot and like switched them on. (laughs) And he played me a little song and then he said some nice things and then he proposed to me. And of course I was crying and didn't even look at the ring before, <laughs> so, um, but it was really lovely. Um, and then we went out for a nice meal and thing. So it was really nice. Yeah. Oh, so, so did you did you sort of tell your family straight away, or did you sort of like take a breath and enjoy your sort of little bubble before you went off and sort of told the most important people? Well, we did keep it until um, we'd finished our meal after mm. we went out for lunch. So. It was really nice just to have that time together with just us knowing. Um, it's then, like your own little secret. Isn't exactly. It? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we, um, we both wanted to tell our parents first, so um, I wanted to wait till we got back to my house to tell my parents. But he really wanted to tell his parents, so I said, "Well, go on then. You can send them a message." <laughs> um, and then when we got back to my house. My mum had gone food shopping, <laughs> and it was just my dad there. I was like, well, I can't just tell my dad about my mum there. So <laughs> we had to just wait for like an hour for my mum to come home, just like in anticipation. Of just twiddling your thumbs, like um, trying to hide the ring. <laughs> um, 
but yeah eventually she came home and we told them and they were so excited so it was really lovely and I mean there's probably a lot of people out there who have just got engaged and they might have told their nearest and dearest but they haven't told their like wider friends and family yet so how how did you do that and if you could do it again would you would you change the way you did it no I think um so I have a family group whatsapp um like most people I like guess. most people <laughs> um if you have whatsapp um so after I'd told my parents um um my hubby had told his um then you know I put a message on the family um so I just wanted to keep it within the family and close friends mm. first before you know publishing it to Facebook you know so the whole world knows um <laughs> Yeah, and Facebook makes that so so easy now. Like, oh, you just just change your relationship status. Yeah, and everyone everyone knows. Photo yeah. And it's like, oh my goodness, congratulations! <laughs> oh. And it's nice to have that attention. I won't lie; it's probably yeah. really nice <laughs> to have that attention. <laughs> it's like your most like photo. <laughs> yeah, for years to come. Uh, <laughs> Until your wedding day. Yeah, yeah, very true. And if you've not discovered our new wedding websites yet, you can actually announce your engagement on those as well. Especially if you're going yeah. to like planning your wedding and wanting to keep people updated when you haven't yet been able to send out your invitations or things like that 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 is probably one of the places that you can use to to update your friends and family exactly yeah such a good platform and what about an engagement party I mean lots of people will probably be thinking about having an engagement party and I've been to I think I've been to one engagement party um and that was like very close friends and family and it was you know the people who were definitely going to be there sure yeah. um so who who do you invite to a wedding party uh, a wedding party an engagement party <laughs> did, did you did you have one yourself um I kind of had a small one um just with like very close friends and family and you know people that you know had seen me growing up and things yeah. from, like a little girl um, were they the people that were definitely going to be at your wedding or definitely going to be invited to yeah, your wedding? Yeah. yeah. So would you like, I think I would be worried managing that worry of like, if I invited this person, would they expect to then come to my wedding? <laughs> like, would you then keep it small to like prevent that or? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, not everyone has an engagement party and I don't think it's something that you would regret not having if you mm. chose not to. Um, I mean during COVID you kind of have to wait anyway exactly moment. I mean you can always do you know something virtually over Zoom you could do like a quiz night or something yeah. um, I know one of my friends um, their uh, stag do and hen do were both cancelled so they did a joint one and they did a quiz night oh. over Zoom <laughs> and had everyone come on it was a bit boozy um, <laughs> but it was really fun and you know it's a great way to uh to have a little party without being in person yeah and I mean you can always like save a bigger celebration party until after like we we can gather more freely or I mean if you're in depending on what tier you're in or where you're based you could probably have like six people in the garden or yeah exactly, go to a yeah. pub or something like that just with your very closest like your parents yeah like that, even but. just like a nice dinner or something if you can even if you're only able to eat outside or something just wrap up warm and it's yeah. still a nice occasion uh, I mean even six months down the line you can have an engagement party isn't it is yeah. it an excuse <laughs> to exactly. have a party exactly you know some people have longer engagements and um, there's not really a rush you know of when you choose to get married after getting engaged mm. you know you can take as long or as little time as you want I suppose that leads us quite nicely on to our next point is at what point do you start planning a wedding like that's probably a really big question for a lot of people because okay you're engaged but when when do you start planning and how do you know when it's the right point to start planning I mean you do want to have that engagement bubble but yeah at what point would you would you suggest starting planning with your experience what when did you well I had a wedding Pinterest board since I was like 12 <laughs> so <laughs> I think all of us have had, <laughs> oh, all of us have had a um a wedding Pinterest board. Mine is on private so that my partner doesn't look at the many, many pins that I have. No, <laughs> no, I'm very in anticipation. I think I started mine off private as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just a nice place to to get some drink and kind of have a picture in your head of 
when you do get married yeah kind of the vibe you're going for and certain things that you want and maybe ruling out things that you definitely don't want for your wedding um and then I think that kind of semi decides for you how long you're going to need to plan because if in your head you want some big extravagant wedding it might take you a good few months um a good few years even to actually plan them um one of my friends is currently planning a Disney themed wedding. And I know firsthand there's been a lot of work that's been going into this. Um, and she's been planning for a couple of years now um, <laughs> and has postponed again oh, uh, for another year. So, oh, and I guess as well that if you are wanting to get married sooner, obviously you're going to have to start the planning sooner. I mean, most couples spend 12 to 24 months planning their wedding, and that's like an average, right? Yeah. But especially with all of those people that have postponed their wedding or have delayed the planning because of COVID, they will potentially now be competing for dates. So I guess the sooner you want to get married, the sooner you should start planning. Exactly. (laughs) So I got engaged in September and then we found a wedding for the end of May. So actually we didn't You did quite quickly then. Yeah, we didn't have that long to plan. And Thankfully, because we wanted uh, to get married on the Sunday before the May Bank holidays and those mm. two. And the venue that we really liked had both of those dates <laughs> available somehow. Oh, miracle. In such a short time. <laughs> so, we and I mean, really lucky there. Uh, Amelia definitely got married in a very popular venue. Can I just point that out? Yeah. <laughs> before, before we can yeah. we continue, like that is a miracle that she managed to get those dates. Yeah. So, Definitely, if there is somewhere that you would absolutely love to get married, as soon as you get engaged, you do want to inquire straight away if yeah. there's a certain date you're looking at. I um, mean, and if you're happy to sort of wait and test the waters, it's worth sort of deciding early what season you want to get married in, I guess. Because exactly. if you're wanting to get married in the summer, like maybe you're a teacher and you have to have a weekend in the summer, that's the peak date. Yeah. you know you like a Saturday in June August yeah it's it's a peak peak day yeah. so you're going to want to if, if that's what you need to do because of your job or just because you want a weekend in the summer um you're probably want wanting to start inquiring sooner rather than later and I mean it, if you're wanting a weekend in the summer but in 2023 You could probably risk waiting for a couple of months before you start planning. But I mean, we know looking at the traffic on our site, people are already inquiring about summer 2022. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's probably better to start inquiring, secure that date with a deposit, and then you can take a breather and relax. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what we did. We reserved the date, I think it was about 50 pounds, and they give you a week to decide. So you know, if you think, I'm pretty sure I want this venue, but I want to keep looking, just ask if you can do a deposit and they'll hold the date for you for a week or two. Yeah, and um, it's quite a small deposit that you don't lose if you do choose to go with. Exactly, yeah. If you actually book it, then they'll take that, that to pull it off. So what do you need to tick off the list in those first initial months? So I think I'll start off by saying that the two things that you need to decide on first are your budget and your guest list. Absolutely. Um, you don't have to solidify that guest list right at the beginning. I'm not, I'm not being no. like, you don't have to know every single person you want to invite mm-hmm. or how many people you're definitely going to be allowed to have. It's more of a, in an ideal world. In an approximate number. Yeah. How many people would I potentially invite to my wedding? And therefore, how much is that wedding going to cost me? Yeah. And, you know, how big a venue will I need to start looking at? Yeah, exactly. How much is it going to cost me per head of my guests? So when you have those, that guest number and budget in mind, you can then start going, okay, so I know I at least want 80 people at my wedding. And I know my budget is £10,000. So when I'm sending out inquiries, how much of my budget should I be spending on my venue and catering? Exactly. And I mean, we know based on our um, the people that use our wedding planners and our research previously that couples tend to spend between 40 and 45 percent of their budget on the venue and the catering. Exactly. It takes up 
the majority of, of the budget there. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And I mean, if you then know, for example, you want 100 guests and your budget is £10,000 for the whole thing, then your venue is probably going to cost you between £4,000 and £4,500. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you go over slightly, that's also okay. You do, you do know that yeah. it might vary. And, and it I, varies per couple, doesn't it? Yeah, and I guess also it depends... You know, if you're willing to cut costs on other things like, you know, your florist, your cake, your outfits, things. If to you the most important thing is, you know, having a lot of people at your wedding and having a nice venue and nice food, then maybe, you know, you want to spend a bit more of your budget on these things. Every couple is different. Your wedding, it's your wedding. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so you can use our online wedding planner it has got a budget planning feature. So if you kind of know approximately what you're wanting to spend on your wedding, you will be able to then sort of split that cost accordingly across the planner. So you'll, you'll be able to go, okay, I know I'm happy to spend about 40% of my budget on my venue and catering. Um, and then I'm happy to spend like 20% of that on all of the clothing I'm gonna need. And you know, that will help you yeah. sort of map out how much you are likely to spend or how much on average people would spend with that budget on what exactly and then once you've got those kind of figures in your mind then you can start researching and book your venue yeah I mean the first thing you're going to have to do is book your venue because without yeah. that you don't know the date exactly anything and as soon as as soon as you've booked your venue you can sort of map out the time frame for everything else exactly yeah so you can obviously research wedding venues on Guides for Brides. That's, well, that's kind of, of there's all the listing. You, yeah, Amelia actually used Guides for Brides yeah. to, to plan her wedding. And I mean, how many venues did you look at on their like, listings wise and send inquiries to? So um, my family is all the way over in Essex way. Um, my hubby's family is the other side of the country and in Wales. So we looked at everything between Essex and Oxfordshire, literally every single venue between quite a few mm. different counties. Um, and, you know, eventually we found the one that was right for us. Yeah. Um, but it's just a matter of keep looking and- Yeah, you'll, you'll, and you'll find it. When you're browsing, you'll probably find it. And it's useful as well, because a lot of the venues that we have on our site uh, will tell you their capacity at the very least. Yeah. So you know, okay, well, I'm gonna have to rule that one out because it can only sit 60 people and I want 80 people. So you know, you're not gonna send that venue an inquiry because it's not right for you. Exactly. And you can filter it down as well. So if you're look, if you know from your Pinterest board that you are looking for a barn wedding venue, you can <laughs> filter it down exactly, to a barn yeah. wedding venue. So, I mean, it's individual taste, it, individual needs. And those listings will show you everything you need to know. Exactly. So I've done my research. I've booked my venue. Now what do I need to do? Really, really important is to get wedding insurance. As soon as you plan to put down a deposit or you've booked your venue, you really, really need to get your wedding insurance uh, sorted out. And I mean, um, we do know that that's a little bit difficult at this time with COVID. Yeah, I mean, there's there is. are a small handful of insurance companies that are protecting people's payments during COVID, but it doesn't obviously come with a COVID clause. And we are still waiting on those other insurers to start providing services again. Yeah. Um, so while you're waiting for that opportunity to come around again, if, it's, if at the time you're listening to this, it's not available to you, you can, of course, all pay, pay for deposits, um, with a credit card I mean we're obviously not telling you to go into debt when you can't afford to do it but it's it's more of a you know they have that section 45 yeah, or something it's, like it's that. definitely more secure yeah there is a payment protection on a credit card um and if you already have that money in your debit account you can immediately pay off it exactly. is it is just covered with that protection of a credit card yeah um, and you may want to ask your venue and your suppliers you know if you are wanting to secure um you know just ask them what will happen to your deposits and your prepayments if anything does happen to affect your plans while you're unable to get wedding insurance at the moment yeah i mean they'll the vast majority i think that we've spoken to are more than willing to work with couples to make sure they have everything in place so that they 
they don't get penalized if they do need to postpone <laughs> you know yeah. like every, nobody wants your wedding to be postponed um let alone cancelled so they're obviously going to work with you to make sure that you know everything can go ahead exactly yeah when you've got your venue and your date booked you can start then researching and booking those other key wedding suppliers the ones that get booked up really quickly like the ones that do one wedding a day exactly sort of like caterers photographers videographers marquee um, if necessary marquees exactly um and anything else that's really important to you uh if there's a particular supplier that you set your yeah. heart on if you if you have a florist that you have set your heart on to have your your wedding on that day get them booked in yeah get them sorted <laughs> because they will get booked up quickly yeah especially if they're a very popular supplier um and i mean if you do speak to those suppliers and they are unfortunately booked on your day they will also have people they can recommend Definitely, to you yeah. they'll, they'll work they'll have connections i mean photographers the way they tend to work as well is they'll have other photographers that they know of that they trust and if something god forbid went wrong on your day and they couldn't make it they have those connections ready in place like exactly. the best wedding suppliers will have contingency plans um for whatever the case whether it's just that you can't book them or that um they can't make your day they'll have all of those things in place so it, it's worth asking them if if they can't make your wedding for whatever reason who do they have anyone to recommend like can is there another florist that yep. they really trust or think work is their work is great um they'll be more than happy to help you on that one exactly and you know if you are looking for you know you're not quite sure exactly where to look to find you know the photographer or florist thing we do have a number of ultimate guides on our website that you might find really useful to have a look through on these different topics and you know some of the yeah. best suppliers that we have i mean we run through like for example in our photography guide we run through the different styles of wedding exactly. photography um and even recommend a few people that are fantastic photographers um, that that would be able to help you on your day at the 12 to 9 month mark so we are saying that right now I have booked my venue and I have booked my key suppliers. So at the 12 to nine month mark before my wedding, what do I need to do? Well, you'll obviously need to give notice of marriage, um, get your registrar or church service booked in. And I mean, we say that at the 12 month mark, it's because you need to give notice of marriage at most 12 months before your wedding day. So get your registrar booked in and most registrars are happy to get booked in um over the 12 month period or a couple of years in advance it's just making sure you register that that marriage is going to take place exactly yeah because you will need to give at least 29 days notice so that's why we say you know there is the earliest of one year before your wedding day so you know if you can get that booked in earlier that's great you know yeah. it's all sorted you don't have to worry about it it's a piece of paper that is needed to that is really needed exactly yeah so when do you send out the save the dates so we will be discussing the guest list as i said in a later episode this season so make sure you're subscribed to to get those episodes i actually believe the guest list one is in this start pack so it should already be available to you. yeah <laughs> um but the that we have got uh planned to do a sort of wedding stationery checklist yeah. that is is coming up later really season. important yeah and, <laughs> and, um, it's like one of those subjects that's like quite like exciting but like very practical yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if, as soon as you know your date just just send out a save the date just get them sent out because yeah. like people get people excited yeah. give them the tone of your wedding with their save the date you know? exactly and some people you know like to book holidays quite you know far in advance i mean if you look at like some people book cruises like two years in exactly yeah so you know you want to get out you know the message save my wedding date so that they are you know around and available to come yeah and i mean another thing that's quite important to get sorted at that 12 month mark is your wedding dress yes <laughs> especially if you're having something like bespoke made or you know it's got to be imported it's got to be altered to fit you mm. that can take a long time and i mean um, wedding dresses like even from just a, a boutique yeah. have generally have a four to six month lead time yeah, when it, when they're made 
I mean, they've got to, as you say, be imported. Yeah. So when you have that, if you, I just think if you have that dress, and know that it's there and it's ready, no matter how far in advance, you're always going to need your wedding dress. Yeah. So it's, you've got to, you just got to get it done sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Just go to the bridal store, get an appointment booked in. Yeah. Like just to go. Yeah. <laughs> like I got my wedding dress from a sample set. It was like two sizes too big for me but how so, long do those alterations take a good few months yeah um and we had quite a few appointments to you know take it all in I had like some of the straps altered like completely transformed the dress <laughs> um it was amazing afterwards they did a really good job um but it you know it takes longer than you think mm. and I think when you've sort of if you're sort of aware, like we're not trying to scare you. <laughs> we're, not, we're not trying to scare you on how long things take. But it's just worth being organised. I think Absolutely. the word, the key word is organised. Because I think the closer it gets to your wedding day, you start, you know, you want to think about these little details. And it gives you such a peace of mind when you've got all these big things out the way that you can just actually relax a bit before your wedding like yeah I wasn't the most prepared for my wedding day <laughs> um and I did leave things to Regret. the last minute and it was stressful yeah and I really wish that I had you know been more organized you know have better self-discipline to actually get <laughs> these things done so that you know the few days before the wedding I could actually relax have a pamper yeah and you um, weren't thinking myself. about the tiny details because you had those big details sorted exactly and it's if you think about it as like an upside down wedding cake those big things need yes. to get done first exactly. and then okay when I've got my venue and my guest list and my safer date sent out I can start thinking about this and then when I've done my got my wedding dress sorted and I've got my key supplies booked in I can start thinking about this stuff and then I can start thinking about the smaller details and what and how I want my tables to look. Like you don't need to think about how you want your tables to look at the 12 month mark. Exactly. You, you need to think about those big picture things that exactly. need to get looked It's in. all those initial planning stages. So, you know, those little bits then are basically like your wedding inspiration. Mm. They're your Pinterest things, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's definitely like your where you would go. Okay, well, I've, I've saved this table plan on Pinterest because I really like this, this and this. That's a small detail. Exactly. You get you can get inspiration from Pinterest, from um, real weddings, from blogs, from podcasts, from <laughs> style sheets, from the galleries and listings. Get all those inspiration at that 12 month mark. Yes, while you're doing the big things, get your inspiration going, but you don't need to panic about those small details right at the beginning absolutely not and I mean I found you know on my Pinterest board I have you know thousands of pins on there <laughs> with different ideas um and didn't end up using most of them <laughs> um but you know if there's a particular you know you like the layout of a table centerpiece and you really want to recreate it you know that's something you can think about way up the line when it's closer to your wedding yeah um, and I mean it's always worth as soon as you see it on Pinterest, for example, pin it, Absolutely. keep it in mind, but you don't need to think about that. No. Just right this second. It's it's when you're in the initial planning stages, it's, as we say, all about the big things, the venue, the the catering, yeah. the photography. It's, it's, the, it's those big things that you need to secure in order for the little things to work. Exactly. Yeah. I think probably wrap up there because otherwise we'll start talking and we'll end up talking for days yeah we um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll chat to you next time um we hope you enjoyed this episode of guys surprise the wedding podcast if you would like to hear more and be notified when we release new episodes make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow us on social and while you're waiting for new episodes don't forget that you can head over to guidesforbrides.co.uk for all sorts of wedding inspiration and to find fantastic venues and wedding suppliers near you. See you next time. Bye.